Hello and welcome to this edition of ONTV News. I'm Kayla Brandon. Summer's winding down, but that means more to do around Lake Orion. The ever-popular Dragon on the Lake Festival began Friday, August 24th and concluded Sunday, August 26th in the downtown Lake Orion. The festival is put on by the Orion Arts Center and was created to celebrate the 30th anniversary. Now in its fourth year, the festival is bigger than ever with close to 20,000 visitors expected during the three-day event. Well, Dragon on the Lake started only four years ago, believe it or not. It started as a celebration of the 30th anniversary of the Art Center. And it started out with a, you know, small chalk drawing contest and a few other elements. And look what we have today. I mean, it's amazing. Last year we had 20,000 people. And I think, uh, you know, I'm hoping this year we'll top that. But it's wonderful to see the community all come out and to bring people together. Um, it's, it's wonderful. I love it. This is a true family festival. I mean, that's how I see it. People can come here, especially in these economic times, they can find so many things that they can just do for free. Come out and have fun. There's um, a whole kids area. We've got llama rides, a giant sand pile where the, the kids can play with on-site um, childcare. We have crafts for the kids to do. And a lot of those things are totally free. We've got a you know an extreme zone, so to speak, with extreme inflatables and a Velcro wall and um, henna art. And then we have, of course, since it's put on by the Orient Art Center. We have a lot of artists here, artist demonstrations, artists selling their work. You can visit the artist market on Broadway. And um, then, of course, we have the main stage area, the Dragon Pub in the main stage. And one highlight of that will be Saturday night, um, we'll be having an 80s block party with. Uh, Lots of people, I hope, coming out with their 80s hair and their what, parachute pants and leg warmers, you know, think Madonna, think uh, all of that. So, Well, I have to say, most of this is made possible due to our sponsors. And that's why we can offer a lot of things for free for families, because we have many, many sponsors. Um, our title sponsor this year is McLaren Cancer Institute. Um, Waste Management is another big sponsor. Um, but there are a whole number, a whole list of other sponsors that um, contribute elements to this event that allow, it to make, allow us to make it what it is. Well, truly, I just want people to have fun. You know, I mean, the, the legend of the dragon is really fun, and the fact that it's based in um, a true story, you know, as far as people, uh, you know, spotting a dragon on the lake, it makes it really fun, and it has some history and some legend, and it has something we can build on to truly, you know, bring it you know, make it a community festival. So that's what that's what I like. I like seeing all the families out here, the businesses, people coming together. There are, you know, different elements where um, community organizations have gotten involved. And, um, and to me, that is, that's it in a nutshell, a true community festival. The main event was spread throughout the village covering Meeks and Children's Park. Each area had different attractions for visitors from live music, science experiments, and artist booths. The Dragon on the Lake Kickoff Garden Party was held on Pelton's Point Friday, August 24th as a thank you to all the sponsored who made the festival possible and for the donors of the Orion Arts Center. Guests enjoyed music, food, and a beautiful night under the stars, including a lighted boat parade. Oh my gosh, they are so generous. I mean, we are so lucky to have them. We, we can't do this event and we can't have uh, run the Arts Center without them. The Orient Arts Center is so blessed to have them. The, all the owners uh, that have the boats on the lake just love this event. They've been doing it for years, which is why we try to course, we like coordinate the, the event tonight and the weekend along with the lighted boat parade. But it's, it's, it's so fun. I mean, there's like 40 to 50 boats that participate in it. They decorate their boats and they just, they're out there going all over the lake, it's, it's going to be a, a nice night tonight. Kicking off Dragon on the Lake was an oriental styled ceremony of drumming and dancing dragons. It's obvious this set the mood for a fun filled day of racing. Our motto is paddle to you puke. He had us up at 5 a.m. on a morning run, that's how that's strict right. he is. They were doing power squats to yep. warm up. Yep. This team is awesome. Every one of them is an animal. Or maybe this race was a little more serious than I thought. Fire sign! Holy Ghost! Dragon Whispers! Dragon Whispers! Go! 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 Three, ONTV talked to Rob Cavanaugh, 
Dragon on the Lake race director, to get the lowdown on what this competition is all about. Well, we have uh, three heats. Uh, and the first heat is really a qualifier, so they're racing the clock. And so at the, at, at the end of the, the first heat, we take all our times and we take them, the top four are in the basically the races for the finals. So, and then we break it down in groups of four. All right, so we basically take all the fastest boats and group them together, and they're racing for the gold medal in first place. The first place is a giant uh, hand carved uh, dragon trophy that will be out here later on, and it was won last year by our uh, two time defending champions, the Island Bombers. And so they're coming out here, they're bringing their trophy out. They're, I know they're out there, they're doing a lot of work on the race strategy. And so uh, it's, as much fun as it is, they take a, a lot of seriousness about it. But what I see, what I love about this, is it really is bringing uh, neighborhoods and uh, associations and groups and clubs together. And it's great to see the camaraderie of all these groups coming to, that love Lake Orion, love the lake, and uh, love putting together a, a good event for a good cause. And I'll tell you what, everybody out here is having a blast today. While everyone was having fun in the sun, I couldn't help but ask the teams how they prepared for such a unique event. Uh, just a lot of uh, mental preparation. I mean, we trained, we ran, we ran miles together. You know, singing chants and Sit and uh, push-ups. Yep, yeah, yeah. A lot of team meetings to get synced and coordinated. We hired trainers. What else did we do? Uh, we brought in NFL players to get us going. We are mentally prepared. We had a guru come in too. Yeah. Same guy that did the Beatles. And so we try to tell everybody it's not serious, of course we want to win, but everybody's going to have fun and we're going to bring it when we need to. Okay. We pull together really well as a team, we help each other, um, we already know each other through church, so I think it helps a lot. There's no doubt there were some amazing teams that came out this year, but none were quite as prepared as two-time defending champs, the Island Bombers. The Bombers' energy, commitment, and positive attitude led them to a third victory in the Dragon on the Lake competition. So obviously you just won for your third time in a row. What is your secret? What do you guys do? Uh, not Having no. fun. Yep. Have, Have fun. fun. Yep. Get along with your neighbors. Love the people you're with. Go all out when you're doing it. Yeah. All out. Yeah. All out. Yeah. Yeah. No you beer and margaritas. Yeah. 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 Bloody Mary's in the morning, don't hurt either. Yeah. <laughs> right. Do you guys have any plans after to celebrate? Oh yeah. Right. It was great to see everyone come out today for such an awesome cause. The money raised will benefit the McLaren Cancer Institute and the Orient Arts Center. Although teams were competitive, the main goal today was to have fun. Reporting from Green Park and Lake Orion, I'm Kayla Brandon with Owen TV News. With all the fun on the lake this summer comes necessary maintenance to seawalls in the dam. The village recently acquired the permit to draw down the level of Lake Orion. This drawdown will allow the village to inspect the dam and give homeowners around the lake a chance to fix their seawalls. The village will begin lowering the lake by less than an inch a day and will remove a total of 36 inches. Boat owners may need to get their boats off the water before they begin lowering the lake. The loss of water may cause them not to be able to move their boats until the lake is refilled. The drawdown is scheduled to begin on September 10th, and the lake will be refilled on November 12th. Residents that live on the lake should apply for any permit they will need for the work on the seawalls or beach areas. We're going to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll have a special report from Joe Johnson on the new Broadway dance studio. Stay tuned. Township presents Barn Days on Saturday, September 8th from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Gather up the family and bring them down to Friendship Park to enjoy games, a petting farm, pony rides, food, and fun. Pick up some farm fresh produce at the farmer's market or take part in the Chamber Chili Challenge. Hop on board a hayride, but keep your head low because you just might encounter some Yankees and Rebels who don't realize the Civil War is over. Mark it down on your calendar, Barn Day, Saturday, September 8th, from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Friendship Park. Cost is only $5 per car. For more information, contact Orion Township Community Programs by calling 248-391-0304, extension 305, or visit www.oriontownship.org.
Welcome back to ONTV News, I'm Kayla Brandon. For two decades, 698 South Lapeer Road was the address of the Public Access Studio in Lake Orion. Then, in March of 2012, ONTV moved out of its former location on Lapeer Road to offer residents a new state-of-the-art facility at the Orion Art Center on Joslin Road. While it didn't take long for new residents to move into the space, formerly occupied by ONTV. After a period of remodeling, the Broadway Dance Company recently opened its doors and Joe Johnson was there for the official ribbon cutting ceremony. This was the scene back in March of 2012. The ONTV sign was the final piece to be removed as ONTV vacated the premises to set up shop in the Orient Center. The vacant space wasn't idle for long. Michelle Larnard had been teaching dance for 20 years before deciding to open up her own business. Michelle and her family have lived in the village of Lake Orion for a decade, and she decided the available space on Lapeer Road would be a perfect location to open a studio of her own. This location uh, became available right around the time that I was looking for a place to rent, and it was perfect because there was the ON TV that was in here and the back room was huge and just when I walked in I knew it should be a dance room and so it was a no-brainer. I said okay it's available and it's you know next door to our friends bars and blades. After the interior was renovated to suit the needs of the studio the Broadway Dance Company began taking on students in July. On Thursday August 23rd friends, family and dancers were joined by representatives of the Orion Area Chamber of Commerce to hold an official ribbon cutting ceremony. Approximately 40 students are registered with the Broadway Dance Company, but the facility can accommodate three to four hundred students. Currently, students are gearing up for competition season, which begins in January. And all students will participate in a dance recital scheduled to take place in June at Lake Orion High School. In addition to dance classes, yoga and Zumba classes are offered as well. For more information, visit their website at www.broadwaydanceco.com or give them a call at 248-693-2555. In Lake Orion, this is Joe Johnson reporting for ONTV News. Thanks, Joe. We here at ONTV would like to wish those at Broadway Dance Company the best of luck in their new endeavor. We love what you've done with the old place. School's just around the corner for most Lake Orion students, but Carpenter Year-Round Elementary has been hitting the books since August 1st and recently celebrated the new school year with their annual picnic at Friendship Park. Staffs, parents, and students came out in droves to celebrate the 2012 school year in style. Students munched on hot dogs and chips, bounced around the two huge bounce houses, and just had a great time visiting with friends. Local businesses donated items for the always popular raffle drawing. There was even a clown on hand to make funny balloon animals for the kids. Carpenter Elementary is one of only a handful of year-round schools in the state of Michigan. In 1997, the doors opened on what is now known as Lake Orion High School. At that time, relatively new production video equipment was one of the few things that traveled from the old building into the new building. Well, it's hard to believe that 15 years have gone by and what was once considered state of the art eventually became obsolete and sorely needed to be replaced. Uh, we've used it for the last 15 years or so and made the best of it for sure. Our kids, you know, we've had <laughs> 15 years worth of kids come through, so a couple thousand kids have used the equipment and uh, we've won lots of awards and such, but it was at a point where it was really starting to die and we don't want to negatively uh, impact students' opportunities just because the equipment's holding them up. So it was really time. It was time a couple of years ago, but <laughs> it, we, we had the opportunity now to finally be able to get caught back up to where uh, the industry is and middle and small town stations are at and, and get kids being able to work with the equivalent type equipment again. Thanks to the Lake Orion Cable Commission, when the 2012-2013 school year begins, LOHS broadcasting students will enjoy brand new video equipment. 
LOHS broadcasting teacher Roger Smith has been busy over the summer, overseeing the installation of the new equipment in the control room and new cameras in the studio. The upgrade include the latest technology and will prepare broadcasting students should they choose to pursue a career in the field. The purchase of the new equipment was made possible when Smith and some of the students approached the Lake Orion Cable Commission to request a grant using franchise fees generated by cable revenue. It was not paid for with tax dollars. It wasn't paid for with school budget money. Uh, we were very fortunate to get a grant from the Orion Community Cable Communications Commission. Uh, and they, their money kind of comes from your franchise fees and your cable bill and some other sources. Uh, and we do lots of programming for the PEG channels, the education channel primarily, that people can watch our newscasts at home uh, on TV and uh, if they have cable in the, in the area or online, they can stream it too. But uh, because we do those things, we fit the goals of what they ask of uh, grant applications. So they were kind enough to give us the grant we needed to fund this equipment. Look for programming generated by LOHS students to air on the Education Channel, Comcast Channel 22, and UVerse Channel 99. We're going to step aside again, but when we return, we'll take a look at sports here on ONTV in the local community. Stay tuned. We want a habitat home. I love working on my habitat home. Soy dueño de una casa de habitat. My neighbor is a habitat homeowner. Being a habitat homeowner has changed our lives. My mortgage payment for Habitat is less than what I paid for rent. Habitat for Humanity of Oakland County currently has homes available with mortgage payments lower than most rent payments. If you or someone you know needs decent and affordable housing, call 248-338-1843 or visit our website at habitatoakland.org. Prescription drug abuse is a national epidemic. The new in way to obtain drugs is through parents' or grandparents' medicine chests. Removing prescriptions from your cabinet is the best way to keep drugs out of the hands of our young people. We've got to work together to protect our teens, our seniors, and our environment. Clean out your medicine cabinet today. Please participate in Operation Medicine Cabinet and drop off your unwanted or expired prescriptions at one of our law enforcement drop-off sites in Oakland County. We can't ignore this situation anymore. Welcome back to ONTV News. Let's take a look at sports. The LOHS football season got underway on Friday, August 24th, against the Wildcats from Oxford. The Wildcats came into the game holding the double O trophy after taking down the Dragons a year ago. The new look Dragons had a tough time in the first half moving the football through the air, only completing one pass and gaining 40 yards of total offense. Oxford, on the other hand, had moved the ball around with a power game and misdirection that kept the Dragon D off balance. Wildcat QB Glacier Wallington made some nice plays to get Oxford into scoring position. Oxford would score first on a Josh Nelson 37-yard field goal. Oxford would make it 10 to nothing after the spectacular catch 19 yards out by Kyle Anderson. The Dragons trailed at half, 10-0, to the stunned silence of the hometown crowd. The game would turn in the Dragons' favor in the third quarter when LO senior running back Jacob Miller put the team on his back and sliced his way through the Wildcat defense. The Dragons would get on the, on the board with this one-yard plunge by Miller. Dragons down three. The Dragon running game would continue to give Oxford trouble. Miller would move the Dragons into position for a game-tying Jeremy King 39-yard field goal. In the fourth, the Dragon D would shut out the Wildcats while the offenses would add the game winner when Jacob Miller scores from five yards out. Dragons up 17 to 10. The Dragons would finish with 240 yards on offense with Jacob Miller accounting for 144 yards on 16 carries in the second half alone. The other star was the Dragon defense, pitching a shutout in the second half. The Dragons gave the Wildcat a taste of Dragon Power football. The Dragons will be on the road at Ford Field on Friday, August 31st against Troy Athens. We'll have highlights of that next game on next week's program. ONTV will bring all of the Dragons home games one, once again this season. Tune in Tuesday, Thursday, and Sundays at 7 p.m., Saturdays at 1 p.m. for Dragon football. Games can also be seen on demand online. 
head over to orionontv.org and click on the fo Dragon Football link on our homepage. The Dragon Varsity soccer team was in action on Thursday, August 23rd against Birmingham Groves. Temperatures were in the upper 80s for this match and both teams played an aggressive style that saw several yellow cards including a double yellow issued to a Dragon player. The game was back and forth affair that saw both sides challenge the keepers, but nothing could get through. Lake Orion would have the first chance of the night on a free kickoff after Grove's keeper, Kevin Simpson, touched the ball outside the goal box. The free kick was wide, still tied at zero. The Dragons would challenge the Grove's defense just moments later when Justin Anderson split the D and was hauled down in the box. Anderson would make good on the penalty kick, going far post. Dragons up, 1-0. In the second, tempers were raised by the physical play. LO keeper Greg Thelen was called for a penalty when he charged Mitchell Kontrarev's attack. This set up Grove's senior defender, Willie Thompson, for the point-blank penalty kick which found, the back, which found its way to the back of the net to tie the match. The game was very physical on both sides, with yellow cards being issued several times. Ultimately, the game resulted in a 1-1 tie. ONTV will be airing select soccer matches this season, so keep it tuned to ONTV's program guide at orionontv.org. It's not just football and soccer season around town, it's also the girls' swimming season and the Lady Tankers have been busy getting in shape for the 2012 season. Their first dual meet on August 23rd was a tough one against Clarkston. Clarkston returns a loaded team with speed to burn, but a little short on depth, and the Dragons made a meet of its of it falling just short of victory 100 to 83. The Lady Tankers have another dual meet coming up against Rochester Stony Creek on August 30th. ONTV TV cameras will be there to cover all of the action with highlights coming up on next week's program. That's it for this edition of ONTV TV News. From the crew here, I'm Kayla Brandon. Thanks for watching. We'll hope you'll join us again next time right here on Ori Neighborhood Television.